more rational to worship the sun than a spiritual god. Since it was necessary for men to have a god, why did they not have the sun? the visible God, adored by the Egyptians and so many nations. What being had more right to the worship of mortals than the star of the day? The sun gives light and heat and invigorates all beings. The presence of the sun reanimates and rejuvenates nature. The absence of the sun seems to plunge nature into sadness and sluggishness. If some being bestowed upon men power, activity, benevolence, strength, it was no doubt the sun. The sun would better be recognized as the father of nature, as the soul of the world, as divinity. At least one could not without folly dispute its existence or refuse to recognize its influence and benefits. A purely spiritual God is incapable of willing and of acting. The theologian tells us that the gods do not need hands or arms to act, and that they act by pure will alone. But what are these gods who have only a will? And what can be the subject of this divine will? Is it more ridiculous or more difficult to believe in fairies, in nymphs, in ghosts, in witches, in werewolves, than to believe in the magical or impossible action of a spirit upon the body? As soon as we allow such gods, there are no longer fables or visions which cannot be believed. Thus theologians treat men like children who never quibble about the possibilities of the tales they listen to.